That's what it's all about. We love Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. It's the love for the Son of God. It's a delight and safe abasement. It's a sure symptom of the religious spirit. This does not mean that we can elect to discipline ourselves to fast or buffet our bodies as Apostle Paul did. However, the problem comes when we take a perverse delight in this rather than the delighting in the Son of God. Amen? Amen. Now, in Colossians 2, 18 and 19, it talks about deceptive revelation. It indicates that a person with a lit religious spirit would tend to delight in self-abasement would often be given to worshiping angels or taking improper stands on visions he has seen. Mm -hmm. A religious wow. spirit wants us to worship anything or anyone but Jesus. Mm -hmm. The same spirit that is given to worshiping angels would also be prone to excessively mm -hmm. exalting people. Now that's another thing. Uh, we got to be careful. Amen. How we be exalting people? How we be lifting people up? Yes. How we be talking to them? How we be, you know, oh my God, is no, you, you just so awesome, and you just, you just pray so good, you just so anointing. Oh, the anointing on your life is so great. I want to be just like you. Mm. Mm. Dangerous. Dangerous. I want that anointing you got. That's on page one sixty-two in the top paragraph. Okay, you got something you want to say? I just have a question. Okay. Can you explain what exactly self-abasement really means? Self-abasement is when it's you. When it, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's all about you. It's all about self. Yeah. Okay. That's it. It's all about self. It's all about I can do it. Self-abasement was Satan. When he exalted his throne about, about God, he said, I can exalt my blood, my throne above. I can do it. Let's be careful about that. You find people that's blessed with jobs and all of a sudden it's just become about them. You know? All of a sudden they don't want to go to church. It's all about the work. I don't have time. I got to go to work. I got to do that. Everything is re revolving around self. We must be aware of anyone who unduly exalts angels or men and women of God or anyone who uses the vision that it has received in order to gain improper influence in the church. God does not give us revelation so that people will respect us more. Isn't that something? I yes. God can give you that revelation so that they can respect Man. you more or to prove our ministry. We're not out trying to prove Jubilee. Amen. Right. We should just be Jubilees. You know what I'm saying? We should not even now be trying to prove to people that we are church or even that we exist. We should be going on in the Lord. Amen? Amen. We, should be, we, we don't have to prove our ministry. We don't have to prove that. It says the fruit of true revelation will be humility and not pride. So we got to make sure that we don't have a spirit of pride in there. Amen? Amen. Amen? And we can have that. We can have that. I can have that. I can say, you know, I'm not one of the wretched of members of Jubilee. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I've been with Apostle a long time. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a spirit of pride. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, let's look at this Amen. for what it is. Amen. That is a spirit of pride. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Of course, the scripture teaches Christians do have these prophetic experiences. And we are also told in Acts 2 and 17, they will increase in the last days. Yeah. Jesus also warned that in the last days, there would be many false prophets. Okay? Mm -hmm. Prophetic revelation that is truly from God is crucial to the body of Christ. The enemy knows this very well, which is to why he will raise up many false prophets. But they can be easily discerned. As Paul warned the Colossians, the danger doesn't come from those who are having prophetic prophetic revelation, but, but from those who have been inflated by them. Come on. You inflated by your revelation. Mm. Come on now. God give you some revelation. Now your head is big. Right. No one else have revelation like you have revelation. Right. You know the word better than anyone else. Amen? My then God. we'll see that spirit just come on into the church. And then it begin to draw people to him. Yes. Come on now. Or her. You have to be careful of that. Your word is different from apostle's word. 
We become, our head become inflated. We want to give a word to the people. We want to stand before the people. Come on now. Amen? It says, a religious, a religious spirit will always feed our fear or pride. Wherein genuine spiritual maturity will always lead to increasing humility. That means the more that we become like the Lord, the more humble we should become. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that something? Yes. The more humble we should become. Mm -hmm. This progression of humility is wonderfully demonstrated in the life of Paul the Apostle. In his letter to the Galatians, estimated to have been written in 56 AD, he declared that when he visited the original apostles in Jerusalem, contribute, they contributed nothing to me. He wouldn't even accept that. He said they contributed nothing to me. He was by this declaring that he had as much as they did, but they did not contribute nothing to him. Amen? Mm -hmm. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, written about six years later, he called himself the least of the apostles. The least, he didn't play himself up. He said, I'm the least of the apostles. Mm -hmm. But that's 1 Corinthians 15, 9. And yes. Ephesians 3, 8, written in about 61 AD, he, compared, he declared himself to be the very least of all saints. When writing to Timothy in approximately 65 A.D., Paul declared himself to be the foremost of all That's sinners. What he, said. Wow. he never forgot that he was the sinner. Yes. We get so righteous, amen. My God. We yes. get saved. We forget that we were saved. Yes. We don't even want to give our testimony anymore. My God. We don't want to tell people what we went through and how we got over. Come on. Amen. Help us out. Then it says, uh, foremost of all sinners, added that he had found mercy. A true revelation of God's mercy is a great antidote for the religious spirit. Mm -hmm. It is clear by this that the great apostle was not completely free of, free of pride in the first years of ministry. Which of us can claim to be free of it either? Mm -hmm. Wow. How can we? We have our moments. Amen. <laughs> However, we are all hopefully growing in the grace and therefore yes. humility. Now this here we have to watch is young apostles. Amen. Mm -hmm. Young apostles. I hear a lot of people that call themselves apostles now. Mm -hmm. Young apostles may elude, exude a lot of pride, but they can still be true apostles. The key here is in which direction we are going. Are we being puffed up by revelation, our commission, or accomplishment, or are we growing in grace and humility? Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about that. Are we being puffed up because God gave us revelation? Because God gave us a word? Now we can't hear from no one else. Wow. Come on. We can't hear from anyone else. We know more than they know. We don't want to see no directions. We don't want to see no corrections. We don't want to see no instructions. I've seen this. Right, God. And you've seen it too. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And we have to be careful of that. All of a sudden, we popped up in the revelation that God gave us. And we don't want to be still now. We want to be out front right now. We want to put what we know on people. We don't want to wait on God. And that's how they come in. They come in all quiet, ready to serve you, apostle, pastor. Want to be part of the ministry. Whatever you tell me to do, I just sit here. But then all of a sudden, they get anxious. 